What's going on everyone? In this video, we'll be talking about seven SAT math tips because I know the ST math exam is not the hardest one out of the two between math and reading, but it is one that a lot of students still are not getting 800 perfect scores on. Now, I'm gonna change that in this video. Before I talk about that, I would like to say I do have an SD math course that has all the tips, tricks, and patterns I've ever learned all in six hours and it should help you get the 800 perfect score. So if you wanna check that out, link in the description below. So the first tip, is to know how to approach each question. All right, now there's two forms of questions you get on the ST math exam, okay? There's multiple choice and there's free response. All right, so free response is cook, all right? What I mean by that is you either get it or you don't. You gotta find the answer, you gotta do your mental math, you gotta write what you gotta write, and that's how you get the answer. There's no clues, right, for free response. Multiple choice, on the other hand, gives you clues. And this goes for any exam, any topic, all right? Use the answer choices to your advantage. Okay, sometimes if you have no idea how to approach the question and you look at the answer choices, you're like, how on earth did they even get to this point? Things start clicking, you're like, oh, you must have divided this out first or factored this out. This is what you have to do. You have to factor. And that right there will start you getting on the right track and you'll be able to find the right answer. Also, when you're doing multiple choice questions, there's a common trick I always tell all my students that I tutor is to eliminate three choices. You don't always have to find the right answer. Sometimes, if you just have the mentality of, all right, let me eliminate three answer choices. And if I do that, then, you know, by like process elimination, the last answer choice is obviously the answer. Do this, have this mindset, because this mindset will make you do the following. In school, you're taught to show you all your work to get the answer to the math problem. On the SAT, they don't care. All right, so what you have to do is do as minimal math as possible to get the answer slash to eliminate three answer choices. So sometimes, after like the first line of math that you're doing to like break down the problem, you're able to eliminate two choices. So now only two choices are left. You do one more line of math. You eliminate one of the last remaining choices. Boom, one choice left, that's your answer. Let's say you actually find what X equals or whatever. You have to do three more lines of math. You no longer have to do those three lines of math because you already found your answer. So why waste time, right? Like I said, guys, timing is a big thing on the SAT. So if you're able to follow this and do this, now you have more time for harder problems on the ST math exam. Even though really no problem is hard, guys, you will like learn that in my course and like in this video as well, no problem is hard on the ST math exam. You just need to know the tricks, tips, and patterns. The second tip, and this kind of goes to the first tip, is to manage your time effectively, all right? Students tend to take a long time on a problem they're stuck on, especially for math, all right? You see a math problem, you're like, nah, I'm gonna I'm get this. I'm gonna get it. If I, if I stay here long enough and keep staring at it, I'm gonna get it, which actually is true for a lot of cases, but on the SAT, you don't have that luxury. It's a timed exam. You gotta, you gotta get it or you gotta skip it and come back later. Uh, at least guess. Don't just skip and like never leave an answer down. At least get put an answer down and then move on. Right? What happens is when students tend to take a long time on a certain problem, they're losing time like quick. And then easier problems that appear later on in the exam, you're like, you know, you never get to them or you have to guess on them when otherwise you got them so easily if you just spent like three extra seconds on them. But because you have no time. You can't do that. That's why when you're faced with a hard problem and you can't figure out the trick like right away, just skip it, come back later. All right, this is how you manage your time effectively on the ST math exam. The third tip is to learn ST math tricks and patterns. Now this is a given, right? I talked, I mentioned my course already. Use that or you can also like, you know, practice ST math a lot. Like spend like hundreds of hours doing ST math problems and I guarantee you, you will like know every single trick tip and pattern possible if you don't have hundreds of hours obviously there's other alternatives but yeah that is one way of doing it personally i did not do that i was able to find them quicker which is why i even made like you know my nose courses or whatever because i don't want you guys to take that entire time spend you know time to like actually learn these trip sticks and trips learn these tips tricks and patterns because a lot of students aren't able to get things sometimes as quick or sometimes take a little more time so you know, easy for you all. The next tip is to practice mental math. All right, this is a big tip. A lot of students do not like add enough emphasis on this in a study review. Guys, mental math is the most important thing you can do as a, as a student, in my opinion, for most classes, most years. All right, anytime taking a math class, that class, even a CS class, mental math literally is like the best workout for your brain because it improves your brain muscles. All right, it makes you think better, think more, think faster. By doing mental math, you're, you're, you don't have to move your hands anymore. You don't have to move your arms, your hands, your legs, nothing. You just look at the problem, think about it in your head and solve it. And all you have to do is circle the answer or, or, or fill it in and boom, move on. Or digital SAT, just click the answer choice and move on. Being nice at mental math will help you skip so many lines of math when you're solving a problem. 
all right and that saves you time and not having to spend time writing down like your your line of math also saves you time mental math is the most effective trick slash tool you have in your toolbox when it comes to st math so i want you guys to really to flex those mental math muscles do fast facts right do like simple mental math exercises to like improve your mental math ability, to like expand the amount of information you can hold in your brain at once and you know, compute in your brain at once because that's what mental math is, right? You're just like holding information and computing it. So you wanna improve that to the max capability. And the best way to do that is through practice, okay? Also, when it comes to the calculator section, um, being nice at mental math will like help you skip so many problems in terms of like, you get the right answer, you'll be able to finish them up in two seconds. If you're like on digital SAT, you have the math calculator for the whole time, right? If you're spending 90% of your problems using the calculator, you're doing it wrong. There are specific tricks and patterns for these problems, okay? And if you're good at mental math, you, you'll be able to detect them, apply the, the tricks for these problems, and you'll be able to move on, okay? If you're using a calculator for like majority of your problems, you're missing out on the trips, tricks, and, trips tips, tricks, and patterns. So what you have to do is only use the calculator problems for like the problems that have like a, like a lot of decimals or really big numbers and you can evidently see all right there's no way i can do this mentally right other problems with like smaller numbers smaller quantities small equations do those mentally maybe even write you know like a one or three lines of math down that's really all you need you do not have to use your calculator for the majority of the exam even the old sat and the digital sat the calculator should only be used for like max eight problems but that's it you not you barely have to use a calculator my next tip is to take practice exams this is a given all right you want a realistic representation of the st math exam if you're not taking practice exams you're really not gonna be able to see st math problems that you will see on test day or like a form of it right so you want that realistic representation and the only way you can get that is by taking practice problems so i highly recommend to just look at the college board st math practice problems just do them if you've done them before, do them again. Get faster at them. Be more accurate. All right, unless you're getting 100% on all of them within like five minutes, you can still do them again. All right, I want you guys to be able to detect the 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 tips, tricks, and patterns I said right this time without much effort at all. It should be like second nature. You should be like, all right, so this problem, alpha scale the equation. This problem, negative b over a. Like that's how fast it should be. And the best way to do that, and the best way to really like apply that and seeing if you're at that level is by taking these math practice exams and seeing like, hey, am I really that nice? Am I that guy or girl? The next tip is to use calculator tricks. All right, like I said, you barely need the calculator, but when you do, you gotta do it right. All right, there's great calculator tricks that you can use, like, you know, knowing what Y1 and Y2 are, uh, putting an equation in Y1, Y2, find the intersect to find the solution for the system linear equations, all right? Sometimes you can uh, put like, equation Y1, make Y2 zero, find the intersection to find the zeros of like the equation, right? Stuff like this, like, like neat calculator tricks, which is what can really make a problem that will take a long time without using calculator quicker, right? Now most problems, mental math is the quickest way. But certain problems you need calculator for, these are the tricks you gotta know, all right? So please know these tricks, know the calculator tricks. Like if you do not, if you don't know how to clear your calculator, second plus seven, one, two, what are you doing, man? And also use a TI-84 for the ST exam. All right, if you're, if you're using your, like one of those, you know, mom and dad calculators, that's not gonna cut it. You need a nice graphing calculator that's easy to use, simple for you. Those are the, the calculators and you really invest in. And my last tip is to find which math you are weak on. There's a lot of math on the ST math exam. There's linear equations, parabolas, polynomials, similar triangles, circles, a lot, geometry in general. Find what you're weak on. Personally, I was weak on geometry. Triangles, circles, I sucked at them. So what I did was keep practicing them, learn all the tricks, patterns associated with them, and then I became a master, right? I got 800 on ST math. Know what you're weak on. If you're weak on geometry like me, then focus primarily on geometry problems. Don't spend so much time on linear equations if you're nice at it. Like, why would you do that? Why? Why? Practice what you're weak on, and the best way to do that is to take a practice exam, see what you're weak on, then practice problems made for that specific subtopic of ST math. And that's how you ultimately fill in all the holes that you're weak in that, you know, that are holes in the first place. And then you become a more complete ST math test taker. And then you get 800. So if you guys enjoyed this video, check out my course, like the video, subscribe. Peace.